theme is symbiosis. And uh, I am going to try and focus on the many definitions of it. And largely speaking, we tend to see symbiosis as a positive phenomenon. Uh, I'm going to try and focus on that last word, parasitic symbiosis, because it's not always a positive phenomenon. And I think that the, uh, in my opinion, the dominant form of symbiosis that we have around, in fact, may not be very positive at all. I love comic books. I'm a writer, and uh, uh, I, one of my great inspirations has been reading comic books. And I couldn't resist throwing a slide like that in there. But before today's uh, talk, you know, all I knew about symbiosis was from the Marvel Comics character Venom. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the world of comics, uh, it's, uh, Venom is an alien symbiote who uh, comes together with Spider-Man and initially enhances his abilities. But after some time, it starts corrupting. The symbiote starts corrupting Spider-Man. And, uh, and, you know, uh, when he, uh, and Spider-Man has to subsequently get rid of him. And I thought that the Venom story was very uh, symptomatic, or it kind of defined uh, what I feel is the, uh, the primary negative symbiotic relationship of our times, which is digital and social media. We live in the age of information. We have more information today at our fingertips than ever before in human history. We can find out things faster, quicker uh, than anyone that has ever walked this earth before us can. And uh, we believe that that was a positive thing. Uh, we believe that it is, uh, it is us uh, entering the age of globalization. That's what it was supposed to be. Um, but we're also, uh, you know, we've come to a point where we live and die by the sword of media, or digital and social media. We define ourselves by the number of likes on our Instagram accounts, on our Facebook accounts. I know some of the kids at the back will say Facebook, whoever use face, who uses Facebook anymore. But uh, you know, we, uh, our lives depend on the number of retweets that we get. Uh, it has become a dominant force in our lives. Uh, we, you know, it's, we form our opinions based on these reactions in this uh, digital and social media sphere. <coughs> Essentially, anyone can tell us, as long as enough people are saying something, it must be right, right? If you saw it on the news, if people are tweeting about it, it must be right. Classic example, WMD, Weapons of Mass Destruction. And again, I feel very dated because uh, as I put this slide in and I walked in today, I realized that a lot of the people in this room perhaps were too young to remember this. Back in 2003, uh, President Bush told us all that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. So everyone went to war with Iraq. There were no weapons of mass destruction there. But because it had been something that was repeated enough times, uh, because it was told to us by the president and by so many other people, uh, news anchors, the media, uh, we believed it. We said, yes, there must be. Uh, the world believed it. The world went to war. Uh, close to a million Iraqis lost their lives. Um, and we have, uh, you know, the, the current sort of uh, state of affairs as they are, essentially because we believed that uh, what we were told was correct. What happens in this sphere of digital and social media is that we are suffering from information overload. There's so many responses coming into us. We can't deal with it. Our, our natural tendency as humans is to turn to those areas that are, or those opinions that are similar to our own. We turn inwards. We start only listening to the points of view that tally with our own. You know, it makes us feel better about ourselves. It reinforces our belief that our point of view is correct. Because, you know, I'm, after all, I'm following so many other people who say or think exactly as I do. Uh, case in point, Brexit. Uh, there were people who, uh, this was a very famous picture from Brexit, uh, where a number of people, the, the leave 
uh, campaign believed or put uh, the message out that uh, the National Health Service in the UK would benefit by the, to the tune of 350 million pounds a week if they were allowed to leave uh, the European Union because this money was being sent to the European Union unfairly in their opinion. People believe that. But it was a message that kept circulating, kept circulating to the point where, of course, as we know, the United Kingdom exited the European Union. Because enough of us accepted that, you know, since it was a viewpoint that was shared by so many people, we were listening to them, we could go and it must be the right thing to do. There hasn't been 350 million pounds a week added on to the NHS subsequently, by the way. It's been three years down the road. Uh, And what it, and of course, how can you do anything about media in the modern age without a picture of President Trump, right? Um, but he is actually the symbol of our times because he is the almost perfect representation of this phenomenon. We have now moved towards greater tribalism. As I said, we were supposed to come together in the age of globalization, we've pulled apart. You will not find a middle ground when it comes to Donald Trump, you will either hate him if you, or you will love him. If you listen to Fox News, you'll think he's the greatest thing since, since uh, sliced bread. If you listen to any other news outlet, you will think he's the devil incarnate. Uh, there is no middle ground and increasingly these forces of media are propelling us, pushing us onward into believing and thinking in a certain way. Right? So our, uh, to put it very dramatically, uh, we are being controlled by what we see and what we uh, read or tweet about. Uh, which brings me to George Orwell. I remember originally reading George Orwell actually in school or what used to be the middle, what is now the middle school. And I didn't quite get George Orwell's 1984 back then. I, didn't, I couldn't comprehend a world that he talked about, right? This world where people's opinions could be made to change through propaganda and media overnight, uh, where right would become wrong, black would become white, where, as the, as the saying goes, two and two made five, and if the party said it enough times, it was something that you uh, would uh, accept. I never got that at that age. I get it now. And I, I can tell you that in the times that we live in, George Orwell seems to have been a prophetic figure. We have created this world which, as I said, was supposed to make things better. It was supposed to be the age of globalization. We've moved away. We moved towards tribalism. We've moved towards a new dark age where we don't really want to listen to the contrarian point of view. We don't want to listen to the minority opinion because it's different from us. It's uncomfortable to us. It's, uh, it's not what we want to hear. It's not what we want to see. We'd much rather see someone who looks like us, who talks like us, who has opinions similar to ours, uh, and we'd like to follow that. Um, it is a world of extremes. We're all being pushed to the edges, ultra-liberal, ultra-conservative, left-wing, right-wing, whatever, however you want to define that. And it's the world where you people, as young people, are going to step into. I don't envy you because the world that I stepped out onto when I left school was a very different world. In many ways, it was a kinder, safer world. Um, but this is something that, uh, th that's a luxury that you no longer have you will have to face uh, this world of extremes. Uh, you will have to kind of step out of, your, of the cocoon of your family and your existence as it has been to this point and go out into the world for the first time and make your own way in it, um, like a pioneer or like a mountaineer. My advice, the way that I, I framed this question when we started out, my advice to you or my advice to my son would be this. Don't ignore the contrarian opinion. Don't ignore the minority viewpoint. You might not like it. You might not agree with it. That's fine. Absolutely. But listen to it. It will make you 
better human beings, and it will make this a better world. Thank you. Thank you.